Hey, my name is Chad. On this channel, we like to make stuff, and it has been two years since we first purchased this derelict property behind me. Now, I am way behind on updates, but this is the perfect opportunity to catch up to where we are today. That would be September of 2024. For example, we got bees. We've got pumpkins. Oh, it looks like I just harvested one. So we've got a lot going on here, but let's go back to when I first bought it and see where we started. All right, we're gonna start off here at the bottom of the property or the entrance. Uh, we're gonna go along this, this dirt driveway. Off to the right, you see a big clearing and uh, that's all overgrown, but that's where I put my pumpkins currently. Uh, then you're met at the, uh, the clearing here by this old house from 1944. We're gonna talk a little bit about that later. And you're gonna see the first of the two mobile homes that uh, came with the property. Uh, I put a lot of work into um, demolishing those and salvaging what I could from them. And you can see here how lush and forested Virginia is. Basically all of Virginia is like this and uh, it's a constant uh, chore to stay on top of that. Otherwise I would lose this clearing to forest as well. Now we're going to go out here towards the top of the property. It's a five acre property, kind of shaped like a, a thinly sliced pizza slice. Um, at the top of the property is bordered by uh, somebody's driveway. So there you can see it down there. We'll turn around here and head back towards the clearing. See all these trees, uh, a lot of pines, oaks, um, and uh, sweet gum trees and other types. Um, here you can see how overgrown the clearing is. You're going to see a lot of trash. You got a power line there that's no longer there. Um, you see just a bunch of clutter from the previous owner who was a contractor. And I think he just piled up all of his unused materials from jobs for possible future jobs. And you see just how wrecked it is. Right there you see uh, an old shed that collapsed in on itself. And then um, all these tall fern-like bushes you know, had to get all cleared out. They burn really well, by the way, so I'm glad those are gone. I'm going to step inside this old pink house from uh, the 60s for sure. I think somebody had been living there, as near as I can tell, uh, as late as 2017. Um, I had found you know, a bunch of his clothes hanging in the closet, um, just as, as, he was, as if he was ready to go to church the next uh, Sunday. Um, had to go through all that stuff. And here in this building, um, it was used as an old... Uh, Sunday school. It's basically it's only got one dividing wall basically right here. So you had like a one quarter and three quarter division in this uh, this old mobile home. And I think what the intent was for the contractor that lived there prior or worked there prior like, prior to me buying it, um, I think I was going to be his uh, his on site office space. Uh, that's just speculation on my part. But uh, I went ahead and took that down and you know, got a little bit of salvage money for it. And right here is the future site of my uh, new timber frame wood shop. And then um, here, I don't, know, I don't know what you make of that, but it's an old deer head painted black with red horns. <laughs> so as you can see behind me, everything else is just so much more tidy. Uh, the grass is trimmed, the grass and the weeds, whatever. Um, just uh, there is so much refuse that was removed from this place. So much garbage has been in the tree lines for decades, uh, old household goods, a um, bunch of bottles and, and other trash, whatever you can think of is back in these woods. Uh, I've burned off as much of it as I could, uh, probably tons of garbage that is burnable, and, uh, and we still got a long ways to go. Now this here is one of the more nostalgic things I've found. It's uh, one of the old original, probably the original Atari. Um, it's got the, uh, the controllers, like this is like the one you used for Pong. Um, and then it's got both of these. 
So I'm sure there's a lot of people with memories of this. The old game reset switch. So that's that's pretty cool, but of course it's absolutely trash. Got some more uh, trash heaps in here. I think we had an old chicken coop or something. Some other kind of pins here. There's another TV right there. Another trash heap there and a bed frame back in there back there in the in the trees. When my mother was here about a year ago, she stayed out here with her husband in, the, in an RV and she filled up about uh, 21 of these um, uh, trash bins and we hauled it away and uh, there is just so much more. Where do these trash bins come from? Well, they were purchased with the property. They were left here so I made good use out of them. But we filled up 21 of those things and uh, took them all to the dump and we still have probably a hundred more loads just like that. So enough about the trash. I think you get it because this is literally an actual dump. So uh, let's uh, get into more substance here. Let's talk about the uh, structure behind me. So in all my goals for this place, I started acquiring equipment. And if you're going to invest in equipment such as this, you should really uh, give it some shelter. So in addition to needing shelter for your equipment, you're also uh, bringing all your tools and everyday items out here. And you don't want to be hauling those back and forth and loading and, and unloading them from your vehicle. So I needed a secure and dry spot to house all that stuff. Uh, so I went ahead and acquired um, this 20-foot shipping container. And this shipping container became my base of operations. And I went ahead and decided to put these lean-tos off both sides of the shipping container uh, just to use it as my main structure. Um, talk about that in a minute. Um, so I went ahead and I've got uh, the shipping container up on blocks. It is very level. Um, and then I built the roofs off of both sides you'll notice and you'll probably wonder what i'm thinking uh, but the roof slope goes back to the flat roof of the shipping container on both sides well i went ahead and uh, decided i was going to collect water and that water collection is straight off the back of the shipping container roof uh, i got these these large uh, water ibc totes I painted them black so it would be harder for things to grow inside of there. Uh, the water flows off the uh, top of the shipping container. I do have a, uh, a extra roof built on top of that with a reverse slope. And it all flows back to this one gutter and comes out the middle and off these two hoses. And uh, this stays pretty full with the amount of rain that we get. So the whole reason I need Extra water is for projects like concrete um, or watering my uh, my pumpkin patch or just you know washing my hands even though you know keeping in mind that you know this is where all the birds and squirrels are going to do their business but anyway water is water when you're you know uh, washing diesel or oil off your hands or, or just dirt uh, so that's what that's for and anything else that comes up because I do need water for, for milling lumber, and that's what this is. This is a sawmill. Again, I will hold off on talking about this for just a minute. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the structures that are housing my machines. Um, these are mostly salvaged from the two mobile homes, well, one of the mobile homes that, uh, I came, that came with the property. Um, so, what you're seeing here are the uh, two by six rafters that used to be the floor joists for the mobile home. And a lot of these uh, sheets of plywood are the actual flooring from the mobile home. Uh, had, I did have to, to buy some, uh, some new plywood um, to finish the roof. But here you see that uh, fully salvaged flooring, which is now the roof, rebuilt on both of these. Um, I did mill the timbers uh, that are holding, that are the supports and the, and the beams with the sawmill. Um, again, guys, we're going to come back to this. I know you'll probably want to hear about it. But uh, all of the uh, support beams and rafters came from trees that were here. Uh, and not to mention the board and batten siding that, uh, that I put up to just keep the tractors more out of the elements. Now let's talk more about these old mobile homes. 
right now you see the current state of the uh, the old pink house that was here and guys I've got videos on everything that we're talking about uh, if you want to search back but uh, this is what's left of the pink house I just need to uh, uh, finish taking off the the burnable stuff basically and I'll probably end up uh, chopping this up and taking the metal to the salvage yard so this is the the one mobile home and this is what's left of the uh, the other long mobile home which was much newer uh, we salvaged that and I got about six hundred dollars for the uh, the aluminum and the uh, other metal that I salvaged so what you're seeing right here is the modified version of that frame I've currently got uh, um, probably two or three videos up of this project alone this is going to be the future mobile solar kiln for the lumber that I cut uh, from the mill um, what you're seeing here is the front end of that mobile home frame uh, a middle section so I removed a section here that was about 10 feet or 12 feet and I move removed a section off the back which is another 10 or 12 feet and I'll show you what those sections are now doing in a minute but uh, I went ahead and then I had these axles which were further back I had those cut off and moved to the center so it's more uh, trailer worthy so to speak and then I um, welded and bolted on this front section with the hitch to uh, to the center section so basically I had this cut into five pieces and then uh, reassembled it to what you see here with the two axles um, so go back and check out the uh, short series on the mobile solar kiln that is uh, currently uh, currently being built I've got I've got the uh, the videos for what you see here uh, already posted. As I go through these projects, you're going to see kind of a central theme, and that is uh, salvage and reuse and uh, making use of, of what I have available. Um, so there was a lot of things uh, as far as construction materials left over from the previous owner, because the previous owner used to be a, a contractor, and this is kind of like was his base of operations. So he had a lot of uh, construction materials that he would just leave piled up or like scraps that are still useful but um, you know that uh, probably just got piled up uh, everywhere so right right here what you see is a bunch of leftover PVC pipe I don't know if you've purchased PVC pipe lately but it is uh, pretty expensive uh, so like like one long uh, pipe is gonna be you know sometimes 20 30 bucks um, and I recently made use of the uh, of everything I have left over here on a big project that's right over there. I'm going to get into that. Uh, so you got some some lumber here, some 4x4s, some 6x6s, uh, and various things like that. We had some sheet metal. I've made use of a lot of this stuff. The roof on the machine shed, there was a bunch of shingles that I was able to use. Uh, I did have to purchase a bunch more. I was able to find matching shingles even. Uh, even found like the last shingles uh, on the market to uh, match the ones that I had run out of. So I guess that was lucky. It doesn't really matter because you know it's a a roof uh, of a machine shed in the in the woods, and you know aesthetics really didn't matter. But anyway, um, so that was another use of of using or another example of using what was laying around. I'm always finding things like this in the dirt. You get a bunch of, uh, those are probably some half inch nuts there. Um, I think what these are, um, Jet Sweet. I think that's something to like um, put into pipes and then you like screw it down and it expands so you can pull it. I really don't know. Uh, here's a hole saw for like a six inch hole. There's a bunch of propane and Freon tanks and like I think that's like an oxygen bottle that I've just kind of gathered up over here. So one thing that uh, I'm doing to clean up is to at least consolidate uh, various pieces of junk uh, so I can, you know, go there and take care of it all at once. There's a bunch of pipe fittings that were left behind. This is what's left over. I've made good use of uh, all the pipe fittings which saved me uh, hundreds of bucks on this uh, project I'm about to show you right now. This is the big project that a lot of viewers here have probably been waiting for. Um, one of the primary reasons for acquiring this property was to build my dream wood shop. 
Uh, I am a woodworker. If you followed uh, some of the other videos on my channel, you'll see that I have a wood shop in my garage. I've definitely outgrown that. So I wanted to get this place and put my dream wood shop out, out here. It's going to be a timber frame building. That's why I purchased the sawmill. Um, but uh, this is the location of the new wood shop. It's going to be uh, 30, uh, 36 by 38, uh, 38 feet deep and 36 feet wide. Um, so I have uh, a contractor coming out to pour concrete and that is imminent. It was supposed to happen last week, but we got some rain. I'm not sure what his plan is for this week or next week. But I uh, went ahead and I had to uh, install uh, the plumbing drainage uh, prior to that. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about what that, how that works. All right, the old house for reference uh, right here is the corner stake. And this is the front of the building. Um, there is no stake right now for the left corner, but it's gonna be right about there. And the other stake is there, off in the distance. And the other one is just beyond this stub up uh, for drainage. You might be able to see it right there. Um, so you would walk in the center of the building and off to your right, you're going to have a bathroom. Uh, you can see the string, which represents the edge of the footing for the concrete pad. Um, so you're gonna have a door right here. So let's uh, step into the bathroom from this direction, door. Off to your right, you're gonna have the lavatory sink. You're gonna have the toilet. And yes, you're even gonna have a shower because remember how I said the uh, contractor that lived here or worked here prior left a bunch of stuff? Well, he left a brand new shower pan, which I found inside the, uh, the old pink trailer house. This is brand new, it's been outside. In fact, here is the packaging. It's, you know, it's been in the weather and it's been uh, in the dirt. So it's dirty, but it's brand new, trust me. All right, so back to the bathroom. So pretty self-explanatory. Shower, toilet, sink, wall here. Okay, we're gonna go back outside. Okay, over here, you've got shop space. You got a set of stairs going because we're gonna have an upstairs. So it's gonna go up and then take a corner up the wall. Right here, we're gonna have a shop sink. We're gonna continue that drain all the way up to the second floor where we're gonna have a little kitchenette, place to, you know, sit down, cook lunch, whatever, because I plan on being out here quite a bit, uh, kind of like as if it's a job. <laughs> um, this pipe here is sitting here because I'm going to run electricity to the center of the floor and come up so I don't have overhead cords or or long extension cords running across the floor. Uh, right here is the water main that comes in. Um, got a water line that goes this way. Over here, you can see the concrete barrel. That's a, a well. So we're gonna run a water line this way in to the uh, building for the water line. So, pretty cool, lots of space. I'm sure, you know, I'll feel cramped in here one day, but hopefully not. Um, here's the corner, so we're gonna come back, uh, I think it was eight feet or so to this point. Um, you can kind of see the mowing line, that's like, picture that as the uh, edge of the foundation. Going up here, we're gonna have a wall. We're gonna have about three rooms here. Um, I'm currently, in this corner is going to be like a uh, tool storage pantry kind of thing. The center room, is going to be a clean space for finish and paint work. Um, and then right here, we got kind of a, a long storage room. There's going to be a wide door here where we can store lumber um, and whatever else that is, you know, kind of kind of large. And we're going to have a large door, a large double door into the shop shop space. So we're going to have big door. Uh, regular door, regular door. So a tool pantry, uh, clean, clean space for the um, uh, finish work, and then large storage. All of this is going to be workspace um, under the stairs, and probably uh, a storage room here is going to be um, like dust collection, air compressor, uh, 
the power panel and water heater. It's all going to be right under here um, behind the stairs and in, in a wall even with the stairs. Of course upstairs I've got you know all this space which is actually going to be uh, I think it's a uh, gosh 24 feet or 26 feet wide and then the whole length of the building wide, uh, long. If anything, you'll want to uh, stick around this channel uh, just for that whole process and, and see that thing evolve uh, because that's, again, going to be my dream wood shop and uh, the whole point of purchasing this, this property. All right, so about the, uh, the lumber mill. Uh, I've already started uh, cutting timbers for the project. There's uh, a lot more to cutting timbers uh, because you got to start cutting the joinery and everything before it all goes together. So I've collected it there. In fact, these uh, these timbers are sitting on uh, a piece of that mobile home frame that I was showing you guys. And you can't really see it, but everything is up off the ground because it's important. You don't want uh, uh, all that moisture being drawn from the ground and um, you know, it's, it's saving it from some bugs. There's still going to be bug problems. but. Um, yeah, so one frame is there, one piece of the frame. Another piece of the frame is over here uh, under the logs, which are awaiting the sawmill. Um, here I can show you the actual frame. So it keeps everything about 10 inches up off the ground. Um, recently I uh, poured, I, I mixed these, uh, uh, about 190 bags of 80 pound concrete to make these four sections of of concrete for the uh, wood miser to to live on nice level solid surface uh, I can roll the logs straight off the pile uh, onto excuse my chair this is this was one of my uh, uh, purchases that came with the property um, so it's basically an eighty thousand dollar chair because that's all I wanted this property for is this chair. <laughs> but anyway, it's a, it's a reclining uh, lawn chair and I've caught many a nap in it. So here is the Woodmiser LT35. Um, this was um, quite a large expense but I have zero regrets about it because it's quite fun to use and I've made a little money on it so far and uh, it's a huge savings because I'm cutting my own lumber. All right, so lumber is going to come off. It falls. I uh, roll it into this little cradle here. Everything is hydraulically operated, um, so I can actually lift this cradle and deposit the log right on the uh, work surface. This whole uh, gantry here with the motor on it is where the saw is. Um, it's a gas tank. Okay. And I walked into a spider web. Here we have the actual saw blade. It's a band saw, so. Uh, it goes that way and around the big drive wheel and the other uh, pulley. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what does the cutting. This whole thing rides on this rail. So it's going to come back this way. And uh, yeah, here's how it works.
as long as we're talking about machinery, this here is my Massey Ferguson, uh, my little red tractor, or LRT as I sometimes call it. Um, this gets a lot of work done. This is a, I think it was a 35 horsepower, it's a Massey Ferguson uh, 1734E. Uh, it's got the uh, brush hog on it, and then I also have a uh, tiller that I use for cutting up the uh, the field for the pumpkin patch um, but yeah this gets a lot of work done it's really simple to drive it's basically um, operates the same as as any uh, small lawn tractor you'd cut your grass with at home now the JCB skid steer is a huge headache um, when it works it works great right now I'm having uh, fits with it the uh, recently well if you've if you've seen some of the saga I've replaced the alternator, uh, probably didn't need to, but as part of um, missed troubleshooting, I just went ahead and replaced it. Uh, I've changed the starter, which was a problem, and that was a huge, huge endeavor for me. Um, and recently, well, I've had to replace um, a key switch. I've had to replace a um, shut off, um, I think there's a, I guess it's a valve or something, but it's a mechanical switch that actually shuts the engine off at the engine. It's not the key, but it's the actual thing that uh, uh, cuts the fuel and shuts the engine off right away. Um, and then, most recently, I blew a hydraulic line. I've replaced other hydraulic lines, but I blew a hydraulic line uh, off the main pump, so I replaced that at uh, considerable expense and after I got it replaced uh, the engine just was not uh, it was it was losing power every time I'd I'd operate the the bucket and I don't know why um, I've replaced the fuel filter already and my next step is to pull the injectors and make sure there's nothing wrong with those uh, so I've had to learn a ton about being a diesel mechanic since I've owned that thing uh, it's it's like 24 25 years old by the way so it's really, the parts aren't that common, and uh, um, it's really hard. I, I don't know what to say about it, but uh, I paid a lot of money for it. Probably not a lot of money as compared to buying a tractor um, that was newer, but you know it was a considerable expense, and uh, is, I'm just spending a lot of money just to keep it running. So while we're over here, uh, I'll tell you about the melon patch that I planted right here uh, at the same time that I planted the pumpkins. Uh, this, uh, I have not seen any melons growing. I don't know what a melon, oh my gosh. <laughs> As I'm standing here, I look down, I see a freaking watermelon. Okay, so I thought this endeavor was a complete failure, but look at that right there. That is a watermelon. <laughs> oh, yeah. That makes me happy, even if this is the only only watermelon that grows. There must be some more here. Well, now I know what a watermelon plant looks like. It's these, I guess, light green leaves. There's got to be some more. Well, I don't see any other melons, but I will tell you what did happen is there is an explosion of wildflowers here. And I don't know if those are related to the melons or not, but when the sun is out, these things are wide open um, and beautiful, which is great for the bees. Um, got these violet ones. They range from, from white to violet. There's a red one right there. Um, you can kind of see here how plentiful they are. I didn't plant anything else but about, uh, uh, there was probably 100 watermelon seeds, which, you know, it's kind of depressing knowing that I only have one watermelon. Um, but you know, I'll, this is this is the first time I've ever grown anything uh, in regards to well a garden or flowers or anything. Um, but I'm gonna try again next year, and um, yeah. So this uh, five acres counts as a farm, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why I want to make this a farm. The state of Virginia has a tax benefit for farms. So like basically uh, you fill out a form with a retailer 
call it Lowe's or Tractor Supply Company or whatever. And anything you make towards the purchase of a farm is ta uh, sales tax exempt. So that's actually, you know, a huge, huge savings when you're buying things like, you know, a $600 tractor part or, you know, shovels or, or lumber or nails. All that is tax free. So I'm going through a lot of that and it's all coming out here. So it's definitely above board. Um, so, so I'm saving, I think it's seven, seven and a half percent in Virginia for a sales tax uh, that I'm just saving on something that if, it, if I wasn't planting anything, I would be paying that sales tax. So every little bit helps. Um, so now we're out here in the pumpkin field or patch, pumpkin patch. Though it's not great, uh, the yield that I'm seeing so far, uh, remember it's the end of September. Uh, I planted I planted rows all the way down to where the bees are. Um, and I've probably got pumpkin seeds every four to five feet, looking at about seven different varieties, um, if I recall. Uh, and they're, they're, the, the vines were doing really good right here under these trees where it was getting shade. Um, but the, in the last uh, couple weeks, they've kind of started weathering and curling up, kind of like this. Um, and you can see like, like this is a pretty healthy vine, which was actually planted in that row, and it kind of stretches over to this row. And same, just like this one, that one, yeah, they're just going all over the place. So I'm letting them. But I'm, I'm not seeing that many pumpkins, if any, on every vine. I don't know why, because I got the bees out here doing their pollination thing. Um, but you would think that uh, all these would be producing fruit of some sort. Look at this little guy right here. Um, and maybe that's one of the ones that aren't supposed to get very big. So let's uh, check out what we do have. So here's one, they're starting to turn orange. They used to be green. So here's my hand in comparison. That's one. Here's another one, but look at this vine. It's all dried up. So that probably isn't gonna get any bigger because I don't think it's gonna be getting any nutrients. And you got this guy right here on a dry vine. Oh, look at all those things. What are those? No idea. Um, probably not good for a pumpkin though. They're probably using it. Here's another one. And see, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not sure that um, these are in the best soil and best conditions for growing big pumpkins, but again, I'm getting the tax benefit or the tax-free benefit. And even if this is all that happens, I'll probably just plow these back into the soil and uh, hope they, uh, look at that right there. That was a pumpkin that I guess died and rotted away. But yeah, really I've got nothing else to show for down here. And I've probably got, I don't know, $60 in pumpkin seeds into this whole thing, but I guess uh, whatever. <laughs> Look at this one. I found this one early earlier and it was uh, already rotted. Hey, spider web. So when I threw it, it just kind of shattered. Look at all those pumpkin seeds that uh, might produce pumpkins next year. Maybe not. They'll probably uh, get get uh, sunbaked and and uh, dry up and die before they ever have a chance to germinate again. So yeah, not much to show for the pumpkin project. Here's another one. But yeah, it's just an experiment. I'll probably uh, look for a fertilizer solution in the next year. Yeah. 
Let's go look at the bees. Somehow I found myself becoming a beekeeper because somebody told me there's a grant on the Virginia Department of Agriculture's website where uh, they will send you some free beehives if you applied. Uh, I think pretty much everybody wins. Um, so what you see here is uh, the result, at least the start of the result of that grant. They send you three beehive kits. I painted them uh, Easter egg colors. Basically, this is these are the colors of uh, the mist tints at uh, Lowe's that you can get for like seven dollars a quart. So I wanted to go with like some fun colors. But uh, the Virginia Department of Agriculture, with this grant, provided uh, three free beehive kits, uh, and the value is somewhere around six hundred dollars. So I went ahead and got those, and I actually went to a beekeepers convention at a uh, state college around here, and as one of the door prizes I won a pack of bees so I got one free uh, uh, pack of bees and a, I went ahead and purchased a second one and then I purchased a third one so I'm running three beehives I've already taken some honey from it and it's pretty good um, but I find myself uh, suddenly very interested in beekeeping um, I never ever you know crossed my mind that I would ever do this uh, but now that I I won that uh, grant, I find that I'm. It's just it's so impressive these creatures, the way they work, uh, the fact that they are uh, pulling uh, flowers or pollen from flowers that uh, you didn't plant, uh, and they're producing a. Uh, legit product. So that's the bees. If there's one thing that I can uh, claim some uh, agricultural farm related success on is it's the bees. Um, I'm going to continue to grow this endeavor. I'm going to add more more colonies to the property. Um, yeah, it's just you can get uh, uh, so much value whether monetary or or just uh, having the honey um, from honey. Um, so I think it's just it's just a worthwhile thing to pursue. Uh, let's talk about this electric fence here. Um, this is uh, I heard about a three-dimensional deer fence. Um, so basically, I wanted to protect the pumpkins from deer. There are plenty of deer that uh, wander about here casually, but uh, the theory is that a deer does not jump over anything it can't stand next to. So I've got. Uh, um, two lines here and actually it's a little loose it's usually up here about that uh, that high but uh, and then there is a third line out here and so the deer will test this maybe get a little shock and uh, maybe that's enough to get it to back off um, but uh, evidently a deer will not jump over something it can't stand next to so if it stands here next to this one and it's getting shocked you know it won't get any closer and uh, therefore, you know, you can keep a deer out with, you know, something that, you know, could otherwise easily be crawled through. Um, and a deer can easily jump over something this high. So I've got this three-dimensional electric fence that's running on solar power uh, up there hanging on the house. And um, it's off right now, obviously, uh, just because, well, I don't know why, just because I haven't turned it back on since I turned it off one day. And uh, I'm not that in love with my my pumpkin uh, um, yield, so whatever. It, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. So so that's the, uh, the story behind this electric fence. So by now, you're probably wondering, you know, why did I buy this place? It's so much work. Um, what is the plan? Obviously, I told you I want to build my wood shop, but you know, why, why here, and why did I get a property with uh, so much work attached to it? Well, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and uh, you know, hopefully you'll uh, understand what I got going on out here a little better. So first of all, if you still watch this video uh, of me talking about my place, uh, I really appreciate that and it means a lot uh, for the channel's success. Um, but that, all that aside, um, why did I do this? Um, I'll tell you right now, um, two years ago 
I had recently retired from the U.S. Army after 27 years and a whole bunch of deployments. I did four deployments, two to Iraq, two to Afghanistan, and, and some other places. Um, but uh, it was time to go ahead and hang it up, and then I decided that uh, I wanted to, well, I'm, I'm about to be 47 tomorrow in fact is my birthday uh, but at, at that time I was 45 you know I could have went in and uh, got into like a, a, a new career but you know I didn't want to do that uh, I just wanted to you know be happy and and I was really happy doing woodworking and like I said earlier uh, I had outgrown my garage shop so I wanted to come out and I wanted to you know acquire a piece of property and um, you know build my dream wood shop where I can come every day um, it really wasn't working uh, being home and accessible and you know calling it a woodworking business because you know I'd always you know get pulled aside to do uh, this project or that uh, so here I am uh, two years later it's this is really you know kind of a slow lift off uh, for for what I wanted but uh, um, we're getting this uh, this pad anytime uh, in the next few days two weeks next week I don't know but as soon as that pad goes in, it's going to be, um, you know, cutting all the timber. You got to get all the timbers cut and uh, um, uh, shaped for the joinery, and then it goes up very quick, like within two days, uh, if, and maybe maybe one day if you get the right equipment. Uh, but uh, that's what's going to happen uh, in the near future with this channel. This is going to be um, all about building that uh, timber frame. Now I am uh, posting regular videos, which are, well, they're about a year in the past. It's taken me that long to um, uh, just pull the footage together and and make a good, uh, coherent uh, uh, video that people are going to stick through and watch because, you know, that's important. You can put up videos all day, but if, uh, you know, they're not coherent, or entertaining in some way people are going to be leaving within one or two minutes like no doubt some people have done with this very video but uh, for those of you that are still with us at this point um, again thank you but uh, that's what you can look forward to is this building getting put up and uh, constructed now what about this old house you probably don't want to know about that do you well, maybe you do. I'll, I'll tell you right now, this house was uh, built in 1944, right at the end of the World War II. Um, I have found a lot of history uh, in going through this house. Uh, a lot has revealed itself to me, and I've posted some videos on that. Um, and I guess I could take you in there, but uh, we'll probably save that for a playlist that I've created. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and post that. Uh, right here at the end of the video. So how do you like that for a teaser? Uh, I've referred to this place as a crack house. Uh, if you watch that playlist, which is going to come up here in a minute, uh, you'll see exactly why I call it a crack house. But uh, yeah, check it out. <laughs> 